Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And today I'm starting a new project that is a set of uh, placemats. And this is a pattern that is based off of a um, technique that I learned uh, from Sarah Jackson. And she did this technique called um, False Satin Damask uh, with Pickup. And um, it is a pickup technique, uh, and it you can create pictures using the pickup. So um, I've done these a couple times before, and this is one of the designs that I did. Uh, this is not Sarah's um, design. This is my own design that I created. And I have a friend who owns a coffee shop. And so I thought I would create some placemats for her using her uh, coffee shop's logo. And so uh, here's her coffee shop, which is Sidekick Coffee. And it's in Woodenville, Washington. And then their mascot is a little dog. He's really cute. Um, so I was able to take uh, a stamp of her logo and create, digitize it and create the pickup graph. So that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to get the warp on the loom and then we will uh, go through the steps of weaving this particular type of pattern. So follow along and let me know if you have any questions. The first thing I am going to do is to lay out the warp that I have wound. Now, I wound this warp several months ago, I think, um, when I was waiting for some yarn to come from, to be shipped. And uh, I had something on the loom and I could not weave anything because I was waiting for shipment and so to occupy my time I wound several warps and this was one of them. So we're going to go ahead and lay this all out. It's been sitting in a box. And this is just um, an 8-2 cotton that um, it doesn't have any color sequence or anything like that so it shouldn't be an issue And I use these IKEA clips to secure my cross and everything. So I am just going to um, feed my lee sticks through that cross so that then I can uh, pre slay the reed in order to uh, beam on the warp. I'm just going to tilt the camera down a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing here.
going to sit on that to keep it from leaving while I get the securing clips off my other leaf sticks. All right, there we go. Put that in this side. take this and put this up here and I will just kind of hang this from my warping or my uh, beater bar so that I can uh, rough slay the reed. So the reason I do it this way is because I use my reed as a almost like a rattle so I'll rough slay it uh, into the reed and then wind it back onto the um, warping warp beam and um, then thread the heddles okay I have got this secured here and this will allow me to just kind of wrap these around the um, breast beam so they're not going to go anywhere. And then I will take the leaf sticks and I will hammock them um, through the from the front to the back. Um, before I do that though I'm going to drop the castle or the jack box down so that I can have a clear path through the um, loom to wind the warp onto the back beam. Okay, Let's see if I can do this without hurting myself. there. All right, now I have a clear path through the loom to put the warp on the back beam. So I've got things set up here and um, what I'm doing is when I threaded, or when I um, me measured this warp off, I held two threads together in my hand and warped two at a time so that as I pull off each loop, I have four threads. I'm th uh, slaying those through a six dent reed. Um, this is going to be woven at 24 ends per inch so we want uh, four threads per dent in a six dent reed i'm just going to pull these off one at a time 
And a six dent reed is big enough that I don't have to use a slain hook. So when I get to the last one of this bout, I want to reestablish, that was my marker, I want to reestablish my loop here because that's going to go over my warping bar back there. So I need to, I'm going to tighten this up and that's one of the reasons I leave this last uh, chip clip on here. Um, And I will hold this so that I can get my loop and transfer that loop through the reed and open it up. Sometimes it's a little challenging. All right. So now I've got my loop. Everything is even on uh, behind the reed, through the leaf sticks, and up to this chip clip that is holding everything stable. Uh, it's not pulling any threads into my chain. Now I'm going to take one of the chip clips that I took off and I'm going to feed it through that loop so that I know that I have the end of the loop and I'm going to fasten it. So my warping bar will go through that and I will be able to make sure that everything uh, stays aligned. So we'll move on to the next one and I will just keep doing this all the way across. Okay, well, I am really embarrassed to say that I screwed up. Um, I, these reeds that I have are fairly old. Uh, the couple that are this large dent. And when I picked this particular reed out, uh, it looked like it said six on the end of it. And it didn't. It said eight. So I slayed it at the wrong um, ends per inch, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, I could probably um, wind it on or I could, so basically it's slayed at uh, 16 inches across and it should be 21 inches which I could probably put it on and it would work fine um, because I'm going to end up slaying it in the six dent reed later on. I'm going to go for it. Let's see how this works. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I really don't want to redo the whole thing. Um, or do I? Tell me what I should do, people. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it right. So I took the clips off. I put them back here behind the reed uh, to hold my crosses. I'm going to pull these back through. and put the correct reed in. Part of the reason is I'm going to wind this on and then I'm probably going to walk away from it tonight and come back to it tomorrow morning. And if I don't have the correct reed in there, I will forget and I will leave it in. So let's just do it right the first time. And um, 
Yeah. All right. So that's about the middle. And honestly, it didn't really take me all that long to uh, do this. So you can, uh, maybe I'll post the redo and not post the incorrect do. So here we go. Alrighty, we have the warp um, wound on until it hit the, um, oh, what is this thing called? <laughs> Alrighty, we have the warp wound back till it is just touching the warp beam. And here's a little hack that I discovered when you get Christmas wrapping paper. Um, if it doesn't have a tube in it, it's going to have a piece of very heavy cardboard that is acting as a tube. And it's going to be wound um, with the last 10 inches, 10 or 12 inches of your wrapping paper. Save that because this makes a great starting. Uh, warp separator. It's nice and hefty. Um, my uh, warp beam has pretty heavy cords and regular uh, paper, um, warp separator paper, it tends to get torn by it. So I have found that these real heavy cardboard separators that are in wrapping paper um, don't do that as much and it just provides that stability. So I use that for the first wrap and then I got a big roll of um, 
se warp separator paper. I think it's it's to put down for painting, but it's pretty heavy. Uh, I got it at the hardware store, big roll of it, and so then I start using that. Um, the other thing that I have is because I warp alone, I use um, soda bottles or juice bottles, vitamin water bottles, uh, as weights for my warp when I'm beaming on. So those are my little hacks that I use. So we'll go ahead and start winding this on. I need to get my crank over here. Just make sure that that's not going to touch on anything. And then I will put in the other paper. I like using a nice wide piece of work separator so that there's no chance of it coming off the ends of my warp when I invariably get it crooked. All right, so we'll go ahead and wind this up. And my bottles are at the top now, so we'll go ahead and Pull those back down. Let some more work out. This is really the key to keeping your threads from tangling. I have my warp chained, and I that keeps it under tension. And then I unchain enough to hang the weight from, and that's all I unchain. Because a warp under tension is a warp under control. And if you do get um, any twists or snags or anything uh, don't I tend not to comb my warp I will tug it I will strum it as a last resort I will get out a wide tooth comb and try and get it straightened back out but that is literally a last resort forgot a step <laughs> but I remembered it in time um, so I need to transfer the cross from in front of the reed to behind the reed the process that I use uh, takes three at uh, least sticks so I have three leaf sticks here um, I got two in here and then my third one I'm going to Bring my beater bar and my reed up here because what I want to do is I'm going to take uh, this leaf stick and I'm going to uh, loosen the hammock for it and I'm going to, well, I can actually do it here like this. Well, it's going to be easier if I loosen the hammock. Um, it's best to do it when it's got weight on it, so go ahead and 
loosen that and then take the leaf stick that is uh, for closest to the reed, put it on its side. Take your third leaf stick and behind the reed, you're going to thread it through the shed that that first leaf stick is making because it's on its side. Uh, go slow and thread it through. Make sure you're not catching any threads that are up and it should be down or down and should be up. Um, kind of get down there and look through there. Now we're going to take and push that leaf stick pretty far back because we're going to make a new shed with the leaf stick that is furthest away from the reed. But first, we're going to remove this leaf stick because we have that cross transferred now. So I'm going to take my hammock cords out. And I'm going to remove this leaf stick. And that's kind of a scary thing to do, I know. I'm going to put it off to the side here. And then I'm going to take this leaf stick that is remaining on this side of the shed. And I'm going to push it up to the reed and turn it on its side. Now this time, I'm going to kind of raise it up and push it down and raise it up. This will uh, separate the threads from each other on the back side of the reed. And then we'll put it on its side and leave it there. Now we'll take that leaf stick that we just took out and we'll do the same thing. This time you need to be extremely careful because there are possibly threads that will hang down and you need to make sure that you don't catch any of those. So. And then I like to come back around to the front Pull those two leaf sticks together and just eyeball across and make sure that I don't have any that are out of place. I'm good, so we can take that leaf stick out. Put it in our holder. And then I'm going to go ahead and thread the hammock. Uh, cords back through those leaf sticks and we'll continue winding on. I thought I would show you how I thread this hammock cord. Now this cord is just a piece of twine that goes from the back beam to the front beam and provides tension for my leaf sticks to hammock in. And the way I do this is I have a long piece of string and I go uh, around the back beam. I go down through one leaf stick and then up through the other leaf, leaf stick with one end of it. Okay. Then I take the other end and I go up through the one I went down and down through the one I came up in. What that does is it allows those to have some tension on them, yet they can still move freely uh, when I need to push them and move them around. 
Then I come up to the front of the loom. I uh, usually I try to cross them. Just provides another little amount of tension. We'll come up here. And then I just tie it to my front beam. And I do a surgeon's knot so that it helps hold it nice and tight. And then I just tie a bow. And that makes it so that I can get it out very quickly and easily. I don't have to fuss with knots. So I just thought I'd show you that. So these are my um, backup cross, and I am confident in my cross back there now, so I can go ahead and take those out. This is just a backup when I wind my warps. I always put two crosses in, one at either end, so that if for some reason I end up losing my cross, I have a backup. I'm going to put those down here now. See if I can wind on a little bit further. sure those are not caught. Right. That's about all I'm going to get out of that. So I'll go ahead and remove these. Uh, cut the loops on the front and pull it through the reed and then um, tomorrow I can start threading the warp. So we'll go ahead and end that for tonight. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And consider subscribing to my channel so that you get notification when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving.